television lost a quintessential professional and we a dear friend with the death of Donnie McLeod. Donnie and I spent most of June filming for this programme in Singapore. As usual, he was kind and ever prepared to lend this novice a helping hand. For 11 years, Donnie was Pebble Mill at one. And even though I've only been with the show for 12 months, I already miss his cheery nature and invaluable help. I can only guess at the deep loss felt by those who've worked here with Donnie McLeod for many years. It was typical of Donny that within days of arriving home after a major operation for cancer, he was planning his return to Pebble Mill, and sooner than anyone had expected. For when we chatted on the phone last week, he told me he was hoping to join us today via the Aberdeen studios. So many of you had written to him while he was in hospital. Donny wanted to thank you all himself. He was so moved and supported by your letters. Such was the spirit of hope and optimism then that his sudden death of a heart attack on Thursday has come as a devastating shock to us all. Donny was always held in the highest respect and the greatest affection. And in this short tribute to his 11 years at Pebble Mill, we remember a man we were proud to know. His film reports were unique in the sense that they gave you a new insight into life around the world with McLeod's America, Russia, Japan and France. One thing which came across strongly from those highly acclaimed programs was Donnie's insatiable curiosity about the customs and rituals of strange lands. Perhaps the most remarkable of Donnie's film series was his lengthy trek across the once forbidden land of the Soviet Union. Donnie was the first Western journalist ever to make such a tour from the onion domes of Moscow to the minarets of Tashkent. He didn't have total freedom to film everything he wished, but he saw a great deal and revealed aspects of life there which surprised many in the West. Afghanistan is the linchpin, and the road to Kabul, along which the armoured might of the Red Army was to pass, was rather more serene when we were there. The whole area looks like the faded illustrations from a child's Bible, austere, raw-boned, otherworldly, as if awaiting the coming of man. And when he does come, the Old Testament imagery is complete. A herd of goats seeking shelter from the noonday sun, a river flowing swift from the mountains, and a shepherd and his son breaking bread. Donnie MacLeod was born at Stornoway in the Hebrides, and the long tradition of storytelling in the Western Isles gave him a lifelong fascination for legends and myths. Donnie would find good stories where others could see only clichés, and he came across one on the golden road to Samarkand. There's a charming legend about the first building of this still magnificent structure. Tamerlane went off to the wars to subjugate a local tribe or two, leaving his wife Bibi Hanum to supervise the building of it. Inevitably, Bibi Hanum was the most beautiful lady in the whole land. And just as inevitably, the architect who was building the structure fell crazily in love with her. He pursued her avidly, but she resisted his every overture. And so at long last, she said, one kiss and just one. Well, it must have been a scorcher. When Tamerlane came back, the telltale mark of the kiss was still upon her face. The architect, needless to say, paid for his temerity with his life. But in his wisdom, Tamerlane decided that the beauty of women would always be a temptation to fallible men, and so decreed that from thenceforth they would wear a veil to hide their beauty from men. History has it otherwise, but I always prefer legend. I think that was the kilt in him. Of course, he travelled widely, as Marion said. He did a series in France and in his own country, Scotland. But my personal favourite was MacLeod's America. Now, you might consider that the United States has been overdone on television, but Nonny seemed to give it a, a freshness, a whole new approach, which made you feel you were learning about it for the very first time. Take, for instance, his visit to that fable city, San Francisco. Somehow, I've always known that one day I would visit this place. Ever since the days when I used to read the Californian stories of Bret Hart, of Robert Louis Stevenson, of Jack London, and later of John Steinbeck, this was a place I dreamed about. When I was growing up as a lad in the Western Isles, I used to listen to the, the tall tales of the merchant seamen who told of romantic ports that they had visited. To be quite honest, I envied them only one, a town which to this day still has magic in the very sound of its name, San Francisco. <laughs> ¶¶ 
But this is the city's true symbol, the most lovably eccentric public transport anywhere, the cable cars. Humorist Phil Baker said, San Francisco without its cable cars would be like a kid without his yo-yo. The cable cars of San Francisco are national monuments. A direct link with the past, relics of the expansionist days before the earthquake and fire that devastated the city over 70 years ago. Beloved of the tourists, grudgingly tolerated by the motorists who must give way to them, they're part of the birthright of every citizen. They clank and clatter, sway and swoop up and down the nearly vertical streets. But make no mistake, these are not artificially conserved for joyriding tourists. They're the essential everyday public transport of the city. But for everyone who rides them as passenger or brakeman, they inspire the sort of affection that we in Britain reserve for a beloved steam locomotive. Donny was a man of high intellect, one of those rare beings who completed the Times crossword at breakfast every morning. He was a man who seemed to have read every book and seen every film worth seeing, a man with quotations for every occasion on the tip of his tongue. He called himself a wordsmith, and he was a fine journalist who in the course of his career met famous and distinguished people in every field. We remember his commentary when Her Majesty the Queen visited Pebble Mill and the ease with which he interviewed leading politicians. When the Right Honourable Edward Heath came here, Donny discussed with him the breakdown of talks between East and West. We now have to get back to, to, to the successors to those measures and that means there's got to be a genuine will to negotiate on both sides. Well, you won't achieve that by shouting at each other. I think it's now eight years since a top-level parliamentary delegation went from this country to Moscow. Do you share Mr. Callaghan's dismay at that? Well, I'm not so concerned about a parliamentary delegation. Parliamentary delegations travel all over the world. Uh, in fact, I think there have been some during the past eight years. What I'm concerned is, is that the leaders of the Western world and of the East should meet and decide what should be done. Are you saying we should return to the era of summitry, so-called? Yes, I do. I do. Because in this world, it's far too dangerous to go on without talking to the other person. Edward Heath clearly finding no trouble at all in talking to Donnie MacLeod. But Donnie was not by nature a serious man. He had a tremendous sense of humor. Tell a joke and he could top it effortlessly. And that general lightheartedness came over very strongly in his interviews with the famous celebrities who visited Pebble Mill. Here are just a few of the magic moments he helped to create over the years. Normally, we finish the show with um, some music. And I thought that uh, today should be no exception. And I'd like to take you across. I know that you're a master of the, the piano yourself. Well, this is very true. I studied at the Conservatoire in Rill. We have today <laughs> Thomas Willem Burton and his Sporting House Quarter. Who? Would you, would you like to... Sounds like a method. coffee wearer. <laughs> no. Would you like to meet Tom? Well, it's, uh, is he sort of modern? He's a high-class jazz pianist. Really? In the yeah. fat wall it's not really my forte. It's not. Well, come know. across and just... Let I'll me have say a word with a man. Just be gracious to See the... See if a few tips might come down. Musician. Mr. Burton... Uh, Mr. Very pleased to meet you, Mr. Burton. Mr. Burton how, how do you do? Burton. It's a name that suits him. <laughs> <laughs> would, you, uh, would you like to just... Well, uh, may I just hear a little snatch from him first? Did you, uh, I've not heard what you play. I'm not too sure of the style. Could you just... Uh, That's, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> you see, that's what I'm against. He sold his soul for a mess of potage, you see. <laughs> now, there's no... You see, some musicians can't read music. He can't read the lyrics. Now, this is the problem. <laughs> this is the way you should feel music. And to get away from all this clap trap. Remember the songs that kept us going during the war? Are you ready, men? Yes, One, yes. four, play in the key of L. Ready? <laughs> Flown in especially from the Antipodes. Oh, look at these How gladdies. There's no Nivea cream, but a lot of gladio. Oh, no, well, never mind. Vaseline it's, would it be is just as... great... Shall I... Will you manage all this? I can manage shall these. I, I haven't quite you? finished my sentence, Tom. Well... <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I say, 
say this, that these are thoughtful, aren't they? And look how beautifully wrapped they are. <laughs> <laughs> but the one thing that did puzzle me, you know, you said you were going to have something special for me today. Ah. And I looked around and I thought, well, that's special, that's excellent. But what is underneath that? Well, I thought, I fought, and I thought as well, <laughs> breaking the teeth in for our dog, I thought <laughs> that I would save something special for the end for you, big man. Because you know, Mark, you are my favourite TV personality, because you're the only one who makes me look skinny. <laughs> so, you and I, <coughs> fatty and thinny, it's this is for you this. and all your pebble mill friends who watch you. How very Dun, da 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 <laughs> <laughs> Well, to as be. a tribute to Max Boyce, I thought we'd show him the All Blacks. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> we have a problem here. You don't, you don't expect me to actually eat those things, do you? Well, I don't know. I mean, once we... Oh, my goodness, they are. <laughs> <laughs> once we break them open... No, I, don't, I don't think I would even demand that you eat that. How about eating a slice of my apple pie? <laughs> Hey, what do you think? Where... Unseemly <laughs> brawl is the word for it. Well, it is. Children. It's always like this in, in, in the morning. You can see we've got Peter Seabrook over here who's uh, arranging his flowers. Yes, the plastic flowers. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> Today we thought we'd take him in out of the cold. How you fool the public. I mean, <laughs> you've got a single gen. Go ahead, Seabrook, for goodness sake, how long can you pull the wool over the public's eyes in <laughs> this way? Plastic flowers. Yeah, oh, you're stuck at me, Tim. Mother, he's just stuck a plastic flower in me coffee. Stirred your coffee with a cyclamen. <laughs> Are you swine? Is that poison? <laughs> Hopefully, yes, but I think not. <laughs> That's a deadly night shift. I couldn't have said it better myself. We really, we really do appreciate your coming here, and well, we're very a, conscious of the honour. Yes, a lot of trouble for me to come honest. all the way out. That yeah. um, uh, I felt so... Myself, I felt... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, he can't be heard. He can't be heard. You're all right. You were saying about my latest play? Well, I, 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 we, we stand in honour and in awe of the, the, of the greatness, the luster that seems to shine yes. from. Uh, the, the yes, they're superb, my yes. plays, and uh, they're very much appreciated. Yes. Well, thank I'm you. I'm working on one at the moment. Well, not only do we have the world's greatest playwright, but today we also have the world's greatest gymnast, the lady who reached the powering peak of perfection, oh, Nadia Comaneci, and we oh, will also have bucks. Fish. Nanny, you come in, Ed. Oh, you know Nanny, Is that your real name? Nice one. <laughs> <That's my name. laughs> and we're going to have some box fizz in a minute. Oh, great. Thanks. I'm looking for it. Great. Do, do, do you, you have a in? You couldn't get in? No, no, I'm doing that a lot, but I don't drink. <laughs> don't drink. No. Why what? don't you come and sit down? We'd like to sit down. We don't have a chair for you. On the floor. <laughs> <laughs> it's like being at home, though. I'll kneel down. Yeah. There we go. In front of you. I've got to. You're, you're waiting. Hey? So, shall I dub you now? Yes, please do. Because you've got the OB. It's the only one I'm going to get. Thank you. Arise, Sir Eric. Thank you. Oh, it's very nice to be here. It's nice. Nice of you to come on our floor. McLeod, as we'll all remember him. Pebble Mill at one will be back at its usual time tomorrow. Please join us then. In the meantime, from all of us here, cheerio.